So we all know the GPU market has been messed up for well over a year now. That is not new. But we do think things are starting to improve, with prices now slowly dropping down, and we know Intel is about to join the GPU party as well. So we decided it was high time to update our GPU benchmarking system, ready for anything 2022 has to throw at it. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and yes that is right, today we are updating our GPU benchmarking system. Our last system arrived in June 2020 and was built around Intel's i9-10900K, which was at the time the fastest gaming processor on the market. Almost two years on though, a lot has changed in the hardware industry and it was definitely time for an update. So today we are putting out that old test system to pasture and we're going to introduce you guys to our new test rig. This time around we have partnered with MSI who we worked with to spec out this custom built system that is going to power all of our GPU benchmarks and game benchmark videos this year. So in today's video, we're really just going to break down our reasoning as to why we chose the parts we did and just give you an insight into some of the decisions behind the component choices that we made. We also do have to give a shout out to CCL. Those are the guys who physically built this system and you will actually be able to buy this PC with the exact same spec. So we'll leave a link for that down in the description below. Getting right into the nitty gritty then, we're going to start off with the CPU, which I would say is the most important part of a system that's designed solely to test graphics cards. That's simply because we want the absolute fastest CPU we can get to eliminate as much CPU bottlenecking as possible so we can isolate GPU performance. For that reason, we chose Intel's i9-12900K, as right now it is the fastest gaming CPU on the market. The thing I would say though is that, in practical terms, I'm not sure there would be much difference between choosing a Ryzen CPU instead of the i9. It just comes down to a kind of philosophical point that we do want the absolute fastest gaming processor we can get, hence our decision here. Naturally, by going for a 12th gen Intel CPU, we are of course on the Z690 platform, where I have chosen MSI's Meg Z690 Unified motherboard. So this is actually the same motherboard that Leo used for all of his launch date Intel 12th gen reviews, and he had absolutely no issues with it, so of course I am going to defer to Leo's judgement there. But in the few days I have been using this new system, it's proven absolutely rock solid for me, and of course it does offer support for DDR5 memory and PCIe Gen 5, so we know we're not going to be limited there. Speaking of DDR5 memory, here we have gone for a 32GB kit of a Data XPG Lancer DDR5, and this is clocked in at 6000MHz or mega transfers, and that's with a cast latency of 40 now I know this is probably going to be overkill for a lot of rigs out there and right now the real world practical differences between DDR5 and DDR4 isn't that big so do see Luke's analysis for more information on that aspect. But just by going with a DDR5 kit at such a high speed we know again it's all about removing limitations so we're going to be as free of system bottlenecks as possible. Plus this kit does look pretty cool as well. Positioned right next to the Lancer memory as well, you will probably have already noticed that small LCD screen which is housed on the CPU block. So this belongs to MSI's Core Liquid S360 All-in-One Liquid Cooler, which is what we are using to tame the 12900K CPU. So as a 360mm all-in-one, not only does it have enough cooling power to handle that processor, but we can also use the integrated display to monitor things like temperatures or clock speeds or just put up our own KitGuru logo just for a nice reminder that this is our new test system. It really does look pretty special if you ask me and it can be quite useful too. One key component that we can't see though is the 2TB MSI Spatium M480 SSD which is actually installed underneath the motherboard in one of those integrated heatsinks. So this is a single drive for both our OS and our games library and provides more than enough space 
for the games I will need to test. So not only is it plenty large, it is also very fast, offering read and write speeds up there with the fastest PCIe Gen 4 drives going. And Simon has reviewed this drive, so do be sure to check it out on the KitGuru website. Of course, all of those components do need to go somewhere, so for the chassis we have opted for the MSI MPG Velox 100P Airflow. So as the name suggests, Airflow is very much the name of the game here, and that is exactly what we want for a GPU test system. We're not using an open air bench, so we want to get as much fresh airflow into the graphics card as possible. So with 320mm fans acting as intakes here, sat behind a perforated front panel as well, we know good airflow is exactly what we are going to get. We can also see those 320mm fans on the all-in-one liquid cooler. They are installed in the roof set to exhaust. And we also have another 120mm ARGB fan in the rear, also set to exhaust. Speaking of RGB lighting as well, the beauty of going for an all MSI system means we can use Mystic Light to control every single component in this PC. So we can see RGB lighting not only from the case, that rear fan and the memory, but of course also from the graphics card too. And we've synchronized it here to show a unified lighting display. So that leaves us with just one final component to talk about, but it's arguably the most important, and that is the power supply. Here we have gone for the Corsair HX1200, and this is actually the same unit we used in our previous test system, and it's been absolutely rock solid for me. Not only does it provide more than enough power with the 1200 watt rating, it is also highly efficient too, with an 80 plus platinum certification. You could easily argue that this is going to be overkill for most systems, but it's really about making sure we never run out of juice, especially with rumours suggesting that the 3090 Ti is going to draw up to 450 watts, while the 12900K isn't exactly a low power chip either. This just ensures we have plenty of headroom. There we have it then, that is the new KitGuru GPU test system for 2022. I do have to say a big thanks for MSI for making this happen and to CCL who actually built the system and they really did a fantastic job with excellent cable management throughout. As a reminder as well, you will be able to buy this PC so that will be linked in the description below. Of course, as we are testing different graphics cards, that is going to be chopping and changing in all of our videos. Here we've just used a 3090 MSI Supreme X kind of just for illustrative purposes only but you can find a link to the whole system in the description below. That's where I'm going to leave this video though guys, so stay tuned for plenty more GPU content and game benchmarks coming your way very, very soon. And if you do want to let me know what games you think I should benchmark in our next set of testing, do leave a comment down below. Please do also like and subscribe if you haven't already, and why not come chat with us over on our Discord server, which you'll find linked in the description. There you can also check out our merch store and you could even consider backing us on Patreon where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive videos. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic for KitGuru and I'll see you in the next video.